Welcome back to the Accessible Art History YouTube channel. This week's video is a chilling mystery about one of the most famous names in Western art history. Caravaggio's incredible use of tenorism combined with his combative and fiery personality made him quite the character. However, this personality also got him in trouble and possibly led to his demise. But could it have been more than a character trait? In this edition of Art History Mystery, I'm going to explore what really was the cause of death for this contentious Baroque artist. So to learn more, keep on watching. It is no secret that Caravaggio is one of the bad boys of the Baroque period. In fact, I made a video all about it. The link is in the description box below. He killed a man over a tennis match, beat up a waiter for cooking artichokes wrong, and brawled frequently in the streets. I love the way that Zachary Small from Hyperallergenic put it, as he was a serial gambler with a penchant for prostitutes, booze, and brawls. Although he created beautiful paintings, it's hard to excuse Caravaggio's behavior. For centuries, art historians knew that Caravaggio died in 1610 and were fairly certain the cause of death was syphilis. This wouldn't be out of the norm for a man known to have frequented brothels, but some historians have wondered if that diagnosis was both true and the only cause. About 15 years ago, scientists and art historians decided to figure out what had happened to the famed artist. Silvana Vincetti discovered a document that showed that Caravaggio was buried in the tiny San Sebastiano Cemetery in Porto Ecorlo in Tuscany. Unfortunately, the site had been filled over in 1956, so the team had to find out where the bones had been moved to through municipal records. Thankfully, they were able to find the new site and there uncovered nine sets of remains. But now came the problem of identifying which of the nine remains were Caravaggio's. They were able to narrow down the group to a few sets of bones due to knowing Caravaggio's approximate age when he died, around 38 to 40. Next, to solve exactly which set were his, the team went to the hometown and namesake of the artist, Caravaggio, located about 40 kilometers east of Milan. They tracked down people with the same surname and whose family line could be traced all the way back to the 17th century. Although Caravaggio, the man, did not have any direct descendants, scientists were able to find one set of remains that matched the DNA results by about 50 or 60 percent. As they were the only ones in the group that had any DNA in common with the modern-day citizens of the city, the scientists concluded that there was about an 85 percent chance that these were the bones of Caravaggio. Radiocarbon dating also helped to confirm the suspicions as it placed the bones in the correct historical era. Now that scientists established which bones were Caravaggio's remains, it was time to get to work. One of the leading theories about Caravaggio's behavior is that he was displaying symptoms of, quote, painter's colic, or as we call it today, lead poisoning. While painting, Caravaggio worked with paints made from mercury, lead, and other sulfides. In addition, he would have inhaled solvents and iron oxides. These things combined would have destroyed his brain, leading to explosive tempers and dementia. But did this lead to Caravaggio's death? While examining the remains, scientists found evidence of a stab wound. This would track with Caravaggio's violent nature, who was often picking fights with people and was chased out of several towns. In addition, there was enough dried blood left in Caravaggio's remaining teeth to test for disease. As it turned out, his blood showed evidence of sepsis, likely from the sword wound. But there was no evidence of syphilis. So what exactly killed Caravaggio? Was he murdered? Did he die from sepsis from the wound? How much did lead poisoning contribute? And finally, the biggest question, are the remains actually Caravaggio's? These are all important questions that I'm not sure we'll ever be able to answer, but it's an interesting exercise in speculation. What do you think happened to Caravaggio? 